Hey everyone, I mentioned yesterday on Facebook that 2014 is a year that's full of musical projects for me. Um, one of them is the re-release of my first record, Shove the Sun Aside. That came out 10 years ago, so I'm doing like a 10th anniversary kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to remix it, remaster it, I'm going to add a track and re-release it this year. Uh, I'm opening the sessions from Shove the Sun Aside for the first time in... In 10 years, in over 10 years, I started recording this record, I believe, back in 2001 in my apartment on Taft Avenue in Hollywood, California. Um, I recorded it over 2001 and 2002. There was some touring in there. 2003, there was a lot of touring, so I didn't get to get back to this and mix it until early... Late 2003, early 2004, and then it came out, I believe, in like March or April or something like that, 2004. And I put it out independently, and then Vise labeled, label uh, Favorite Nations licensed it from me uh, in 05 until 11, and then I took it back and I started re uh, releasing it myself again. Um, so that's what's going to happen this year in 14. As far as this is concerned, I'm going to re release it, and it should be really cool. I thought it'd also be really cool to dive into these sessions and kind of pull them apart and show you what what is uh, making up each of these songs. So opening these sessions is really funny because, you know, back back in 2001 when I when I um, started this, I had a Digi 001 system, <laughs> which at the time when I bought it, there was only 24 tracks available. Um, so here's the tracks available on this. This is over 32. I don't know how many tracks there are here. Um, it's definitely over 32. As soon as I got the 001 system, they did release an update. That pushed the track count up to 32, and I thought that was the... Oh, this is, how can it get any better? <laughs> of course, now we can open up pretty much however many we want. But it's funny, because I remember having to really mult tracks together, like all the drum tracks and all the bass tracks onto a stereo track, and then opening that in a new session to record all the guitars over top of that. And then to mix it, I took it down to my buddy Dave Franz up in Boston. Um, he had an HD system, or whatever it was called at the time. Um, where we could open up everything, and it was so amazing to finally be able to do that. Like I said, now we can do that at home, uh, anywhere, of course. So the record starts with a song called Andanova, and it starts with a guitar. This is the track here. It sounds, a lot of people thought it was keyboards or something, but it starts with a guitar going through a TC Fireworks, a preset called Fire Worlds, which I always loved. I thought it was really, you know, obviously lush and beautiful, so that's how the record starts. Um, and I do have all of the original equipment that I use to record this record, and I've used it on many other projects since. And that's the thing, if you buy great equipment, it's never going to go out of style. Uh, it's never going to need to be updated or anything like that. So, real quick, I recorded this through an Avalon 2022, all, the whole record, uh, through an Avalon 2022 set of mic pre's into an Avalon 2055 set of EQs into a Manly Varimu compressor into these Apogee uh, converters. Still have all of it, still use all of it. Great stuff. And like I said, I did record this in an apartment, so I had two isolation boxes built for me. At a time, the company was called Crizcraft. They got bought up by A&S Case. Uh, they were uh, two isolation boxes, small things that housed... Mesa 1x12 rectifier cabinets with a vintage 30, and then two Shure 57s on each of them going into the mic pre's and EQs and compressors and so on. So that's how I recorded it uh, in an apartment. All the drums were done at Vice Studio, the mothership up in the Hollywood Hills. But again, this is how it started. Guitar uh, on a clean channel of a VHT Ultra Lead. Now the company VHT is called Fryette. But all the clean, everything on this record was recorded through that and I used at the time I was endorsing Ibanez um, the first two custom shop guitars I did with Ibanez a green green and blue one and an orange and silver one the green and blue was all the clean the orange and silver was all the crunchy dirty lead type of stuff so that's the equipment that was used for uh, for this record it starts with this stuff and then we come in with a lead track here let's get that happening up here by itself <coughs> Real simple, just a nice little melody. And, you know, with recording, I try and do everything in as one take as possible. I do a lot of prep work for that, so I'll practice it. But when I actually record something, I'll put the strap on the guitar and I'll stand up and, and I try and treat it more like a live performance. 
That to me is much more important to capture a performance rather than all the right notes. There's some flubs here and there as we solo through these tracks. I'm sure you'll hear it, but that's it's not really that audible at all. Um, and that's not even that important to me. Um, what's, what was more important and still is more important and always will be is the performance that's captured more than anything. Of course, that's not always. There are, there are uh, you know, punch-ins and overdubs and all sorts of that kind of stuff. Corrections, of course. But I do take a one-take philosophy as, as much as I possibly can. So these initial lead guitars were this, you know, nice and clean. Um, and then all the leads had a very simple slapback delay on it, which I have on here. You can't really hear it. That's how subtle it is. But then there was a longer delay, that's these, and in this one you can hear it's kind of a multi-tap. There's one over here and there's one over here kind of producing three guitar sounds. And then finally a little bit of reverb added in on top of that. And luckily I did print all of the effects instead of using, uh, you know, just plugins. Um, because certainly over 10, 12 years plugins are going to come and go and need to be updated. And, and actually all the plugins on these sessions are off. So you're just hearing the raw tracks unmixed. So that was this melody. And then down here, whoops, down here, this is the rhythm guitars. And we'll uh, solo those up so you can hear them. So that's this. And so there's four rhythm guitars here. Two of them were just normal guitars and then another one two two others were put through a whammy pedal you can hear one whammy pedal going down and one whammy pedal going up and then there's just a little bit of reverb on there so that's the rhythm part really clean again all through the the uh the Fryette ultra lead Great, great sounding tracks there. And then for the rhythm, the, the drum stuff, <laughs> um, at the time, I think this was Reason. This was Reason like one or two or three or something. It's labeled Poop, and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, but let's solo that and take a listen. Obviously electronic, oversimplified, and I wanted that because this first song, Andanova, flows seamlessly into the next song, which was called Long Run. And on Long Run, I had Virgil Donati, the amazing Virgil Donati on drums. We recorded an amazing drum kit up in Vi's Mothership Studio, like I said. And I really wanted the contrast to go from these obviously electronic, oversimplified drums to an amazing drummer on an amazing kit captured very well. That contrast, I thought, was, was really, really a cool thing to do at least in my mind anyway. So that's why these drums are like they are. They're super simple, little bit of effects on it, a little bit of reverb and such, and then the second part of it goes into this. You know, and, and again, it's fun, funny to listen back to this kind of stuff where, where your head was at, you know, 10, 12 years ago when you're writing a record. And you know, another thing to keep in mind is, you know, that's what you have to do. You can't wait to record. You know, you're always gonna evolve, you're always gonna get better, but a recording is a snapshot of who and where you are as a player, as a person, in life in general, right now. So capture that, then evolve, capture that, keep going. So it, it's cool to kind of listen back. It's kind of like looking through a photo album. Uh, and then the uh, the lead part that came in the second section of And Over Here, we'll get, we'll get this up here. Again, this was the orange and silver Ibanez through the lead channel on the on the uh, Fryad Ultra Lead. And there's a little bit of slap back up here happening, and then longer delays here. And uh, you can see some punch-ins happening right here. Again, it was not all one taken. Great sounding leads. Yeah, I'm mean, really happy. Still, am really happy with it. And that was really important. And then we've got the bass up here, which was done by the great Philip Bino. Philip, of course, a, a, a long member of the Vibe Band as well. This was the bass sound. And I put, I put effects on the bass, which I don't usually do. I guess it was kind of just going with this ethereal type of ambient sound that was happening here. 
So that's that. Let's listen to everything all together for a second. Long Run starts and we'll do another movie for Long Run but again I just thought it'd be cool to get in here and kind of pull apart what's happening I'll try and do this for each of the songs on the record enjoy <laughs> 